this uh, chapter with some very basic introduction into financial statement preparation. And uh, there's just a few slides on this, but I don't want you to get the impression that this is not an important topic. You are just getting a taste of this topic and we will dive much further into this topic in the weeks to come. So we have four basic financial statements that we work with. We have the income statement, the statement of owner's equity, the balance sheet, and the statement of cash flows. It is imperative that you commit to memory what is on these statements because um, you will save yourself endless confusion down the road by understanding this basic concept. The income statement, hopefully you can remember because income and, you know, what we record on it is our revenue, our earnings. And with our earnings, we also record our expenses. And this is where we show our shareholders what we earned and what we spent in order to earn that and what's left over, which we hope there's something left over. We hope we don't spend more than we earn, but sometimes that happens. And then from there, we go to the statement of owner's equity and that records not only the invest, any investments by the owners, any withdrawals by the owners, and any changes as a result of, you know, in the equity position over the month. That then brings us to the balance sheet. And if you can remember that balance sheet equation, assets equal liabilities plus equity, and that those things must balance, those three accounts are what go on the balance sheet. So when you think of balance sheet, what is it that has to balance? Assets, liabilities, and equity. And if you remember that, you will remember what goes on the balance sheet. And the last thing is the statement of cash flows. And the statement of cash flows is a bit different because um, as you saw in these examples, we recorded revenue whether or not we actually got the money for it. And so if we did all our sales on credit for a month and no one paid us, we might look like we were really successful and profitable and we not, might not be able to like pay the light bill and keep the doors open if people aren't paying us. So what the statement of cash flows does is it looks actually at what came in and out in terms of the flow of actual cash um, during the month. And that's broken down into three parts, um, operating, investing, and financing. And I'm not gonna dive any more into that because we will, there are whole chapters that are devoted uh, to that in future semesters. But it, it's important to at least familiarize yourself with why the statement of cash flows is different than the income statement because the income statement has things on it that were not cash transactions. It has revenue that may never have actually been received. So we want that statement of cash flows to keep track of um, how our money flows in and out to make sure that we still have what we need. So we prepare these things in a particular order for a reason. And it's because we need information from one to then create the next one. So the first thing we do, and I should, yeah, why don't I do this, is we, sh we prepare our income statement. And why do we prepare the income statement first? Because this bottom line net income figure here, we're gonna need that. And for the next statement that we prepare, which is our statement of owner's equity. So that net income, and we, we had our, um, our initial investment by our owner. Note here we have a zero beginning balance. And that's because this was the first month that our business was in operation. So he had nothing in the account at the beginning of the month. He invested his 30,000 in the account. And then he gets to add to his equity the net income that was left over um, after you know the revenue minus the expenses that contributes to his equity. So now he has 34,400 in equity, but wait, he took some of it out. 
So we record also his withdrawal and his ending equity is 34,200. Now next month when we go to prepare financial statements, this ending equity number, that's going to be the beginning number in next month's statement of owner's equity. And so we we use this statement of owner's, this um, ending number for owner's equity when we prepare our balance sheet because owner's equity is one of those three accounts that shows up on our balance sheet. So we can just plug that right on in there. And hopefully you remember from the summary uh, spreadsheet that we looked at, I think at the end of the last video, it had the balances of the liability accounts at the end of the month and we just had one liability account it had 6200 in it so if we add that to the ending owner's equity that gets us total liabilities and equity of 40400 meanwhile if we wander over here to the cash side of things because remember this these assets have to equal the total of the liabilities and equity and we add up the ending balances that we're at the bottom of that spreadsheet for our assets and we end up with 40,400 and lo and behold those two sides equal we are in balance and we have done an excellent job okay and then so uh, next we focus on the statement of cash flows and we're going to use this cash number from our balance sheet and we have to do what's basically called reconcile and, and figure out how it was that we got to this $4,800 in cash. And this is, again, almost more complex than I want to get into, um, but it, it shows the physical flow of the cash throughout the month to show how we got to $4,800 at the end. And uh, I guess it's worth noting at this point that the operating section, you pay particular attention to what gets classified under here. Then we have the investing section, uh, what's there, and then the financing section at the end. And again, I'm not going to spend too much time on that because you will have more than enough of that at a later point, I promise. So what do we do with these numbers? What, what, what Do we just look at them and go, oh, well, that looks good, or it doesn't look good? How do we know whether it looks good? Um, and there are ways to sort of measure how we do in comparison. And one of those measurements, and there will be a number of ratios that will be introduced, and so this is the first, called the return on assets ratio. And the calculation for that is net income over average total assets and this allows us to compare across industries and we so we see here we've got Nike and Under Armour and we can see the vastly different return on assets ratio between those two companies and we actually even had negative um, one year and two years ago for Under Armour. So if you're an investor and that return on assets number is uh, significant to you, which company do you want to invest in? Nike or Under Armour? Well, based on the return on assets, uh, I definitely say that um, Nike would be getting my money. And so that concludes chapter one. Good luck on the homework.